Have you ever wondered to yourself, why, oh, why did the Lord put two trees in the midst of the garden? We get the story from Genesis 2 and 3. Often we might wonder to ourselves, why did you not just put the tree of life in the midst of the garden? That would have been very, very simple. And I think the best answer I've ever heard for this is that, you know, when the enemy of our soul challenged God's right to rule and challenged God being God, and he wanted to ascend and be like the most high God, all of a sudden there wasn't just life, you know, within the universe from the one who gives life. All of a sudden there we had a knowledge of good and evil. The enemy has come in and challenged so it's there. And in a sense, Eden represented the cosmic universe and the forces and the spiritual realms as well. That there wasn't just life from the life giver. There was also now this knowledge of, of good and evil, you know, that has come in. Before that, there was simply life from the Lord, who was holy, who was pure, and who was just. And it says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he places the man in the garden and warns him not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I want to suggest something uh, this day to you, that our Christian life, we've been, we've been proceeding on the wrong basis. We live our Christian life based on the wrong tree. We live our Christian life thinking of good and evil. I hope I have a good day today. I hope I have a holy day today. I hope I do right. I hope I keep the commandments, you know. And here's the problem. We could take the Ten Commandments. Now, mind you, there's some 613 different commands in the Old Testament. Are you going to keep all of them? You have no hope. We simply do not have the raw material to do this because we belong to an Adam fallen race. We do not have the goods. Paul puts it this way uh, to the Roman church. He says, no one does good. No, not even one. All fall short of the glory of God. All fall short. Okay. If it's like a long jump that we have to clear, you know, 30 meters and we jump and we make five meters, it might be impressive, but we have fallen short of God's glory. So what do we do? How do we live this Christian life? Let's go back to the trees for a moment. Not only is the tree of knowledge and good and evil there, there's also the tree of life. Now, we know after they sinned, the Lord put a, a cherub angel to guard in case they put their hands forth and ate of the tree of life and lived forever in their sin. And we see this in Genesis chapter 3 in verses 22, 23 and so forth. So God put a choice before man, but we only hear good and evil, good and evil, good and evil, right, wrong, right, wrong, right, wrong. And we have ourselves tortured. But the Lord brings something completely different into the equation. He says, choose the tree of life. The tree of life is Christ. It always has been. To this day, each day we're called to choose Christ. Not, is this right? Is this wrong? Should I? Shouldn't I? The issue is to choose Christ, that the peace of God might rule in your heart and that the words of Christ might dwell in you richly, that as John 6, we would take in and drink his blood and eat his body. That's what we're called to do each day, to abide in Christ, John 15. You know, apart from him, we can do nothing. The Lord puts it this way in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 30. Worth reading the whole chapter when you're settling in the evening. Deuteronomy 30, 19, he says this, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. I set before you life and death. It's the two trees again. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. cursing. Now he doesn't say, now go be good. He says, therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose Christ. Choose life. Choose Christ. He goes on to say, that you may cling to him and he is your life and your length of days. This day, brother, choose Christ. You will never meet the demands of the law. 
by the deeds of the law, no flesh is right in God's eyes. No one. But in Christ, we are his delight. May the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May you have a great day with Jesus. Amen. Thank you.